Hello friends, welcome to yet another session on this short discussion series and today we will be talking something about brachial plexus injury. Okay, this is something very common we encounter in our uh, postnatal wards and it is an important question as well in your exams or your viva voice. So let's discuss something about this. Coming to the incidence, incidence is as high as around 1.5 per thousand live births. Okay, and why is it caused? It is mainly caused because of excessive traction on the head, neck and arm during delivery. So whenever there is excessive traction or excessive pull of the head and neck during the birth of the child, then we expect we can expect brachial plexus injury to happen and there can be some associated risk factors as well. So when all we expect this to occur whenever there is difficulty in delivering of the baby. So whenever there is a large baby or there is shoulder dystocia or there is small presentation or instrumental delivery taking place then we can expect this to happen okay so coming to the types of this brachial plexus injury one is the famous one that is the herbs palsy or the duchenne herbs palsy okay and this is the most common type it accounts to around 90 percent of the cases okay and when does this injury happen okay looking at the anatomy whenever there is injury at the herbs point herbs point so what is this herbs point herbs point is the meeting point of six nerves that is the c5 c6 trunk going into the anterior and posterior division and this suprascapular nerve and now to subclavius the junction of this forms the herbs point so whenever there is injury to this point we can expect herbs palsy so it involves the upper trunk c5 c6 and occasionally c7 is involved okay so as we expect we expect these muscles to be weak or paralyzed so it can be biceps brachii deltoid brachialis brachioradialis and supraspinatus infraspinatus and supinatal partially so when these muscles are paralyzed what is the deformity we expect that is what we call as policeman's tip hand or waiter's tip hand or the porter's tip hand so where do we find this we find it in brachial plexus palsy that is herbs palsy okay so what is the deformity as we can see in this image arm what happens to the arm arm is adducted okay the shoulder is adducted and internally rotated correct it is adducted and internally rotated next what happens to the elbow and forearm elbow and forearm is extended and there is pronation correct it is extended and there is pronation as we can see in the image and finally what happens to our hand what happens to the hand wrist is flexed wrist is flexed with fingers being flexed with the fingers being flexed correct we can see in the image so wrist is flexed and the fingers as well are flexed okay so this is the deformity which we expect okay then what are the other associated findings other associated findings can be moros is absent in that particular limb and other reflexes like biceps reflex and radial reflexes are absent but the since the intrinsic muscles of hand are still working palmar grasp is still present okay so we can as we can see in this video on trying to elicit moros we can see that the right limb there there is moros occurring in the right limb because the right limb abducts opens up and adducts but the left limb there is positive of movement so this is what we call as asymmetric moros correct this is what we call as asymmetric moros next sensation is variably affected and there can be associated diaphragmatic paralysis in 5% of the cases okay next is the total brachial plexus injury this accounts for approximately 10% of the cases over here the entire arm is flaccid all the reflexes including the palmar grasp and sensation are absent and if it is associated with t1 injury sympathetic fibers are involved hence honor syndrome as well we can expect okay and finally the clump case paralysis and this is the least and the rarest type which we can expect as part of birth injury so the incidence is less than one percent so over here what happens over here the c8 and the t1 so the lower trunk gets affected the lower trunk gets affected okay 
So when the lower trunks get affected, T1 is affected leading to paralysis of weakness of the intrinsic muscles of the hand or C8 is involved leading to paralysis or weakness of ulnar flexors of the wrist and fingers. So over here what happens is write the opposite. Grasp reflex is absent because these muscles are paralyzed, intrinsic muscles of the hand are paralyzed but there will be sparing of biceps and radial reflexes okay there is sensory impairment okay on the ulnar side of the arm and forearm and there can be associated honor syndrome as well if the sympathetic fibers of t1 nerve root is involved okay and this is where we expect the ulnar claw hand okay fine then coming to the management one thing that is important is since there has been difficulty in delivery of the baby we need to search for other associated injuries so we need to obtain x-ray of shoulder as well as upper arm to rule out bony injury and we'll have to carry out chest examination to see and look out for some distress so that to rule out diaphragmatic injury okay next is physiotherapy to prevent contractures we need to start it as early as 7 to 10 days of life this will help in prevention of contractures in later life and if there is slow recovery if there is slow recovery then we'll have to do an emg electromyography or nerve conduction study to see whether it is an avulsion injury or a stretch injury because stretch injuries we expect it to improve but if there is avulsion injury then the deformity is most of the times permanent okay and in that view we will have to consider surgery if it is an avulsion injury okay and prognosis if it is not an avulsion injury if it is just a stretch injury okay so if the nerve roots are intact then full recovery is expected in more than 90 percent of the cases by three months of age so by two weeks of life the functions slowly start coming in and by three months of life we can expect full recovery if the nerve roots are intact okay so that's it